Hey y'all, uh, it's Diddy. Yo, back in November 2002, Jay-Z dropped a follow-up to the Blueprint album, which is a well-renowned classic, the Blueprint 2, The Gift and the Curse. But I think it's clear to say mistakes were made. And they tried to fix it when they released the Blueprint 2.1, but it didn't quite get it right. I got the remedy, y'all. Uh, what we about to do, we about to fix Jay-Z's Blueprint 2, The Gift and the Curse. We're gonna turn it into an even better album, y'all. Let's do it. Now, as you guys may know, man, The Gift and the Curse was a two album, double joint album from Jay-Z. We had The Gift album and we had The Curse album. 25 songs in total, long run time. What we could do, we're gonna follow the normal rule set. Can't pull songs from any other generation, from any other album, unless it was just straight up pure flop. I'm gonna pull songs from areas that may have been around at that time period that were popping it, may not have had an impact elsewhere. Not doing too much of that on this project, but that's just the general rule set I normally follow. So first things first, original track list up right now. As you guys can see, this joint is a little bit bloated. When this joint came out, it was not as well received as he probably thought it would be. There was a lot of Timberland fluff. There was a lot of Pharrell fluff. There's some dope stuff in here though. It felt rushed. It felt like he was trying to live up to something. It felt like it was an album that was trying to recover from the Nas beatdown that he had suffered from Ether. It is what it is. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. Songs being removed, y'all. Here we go, y'all. First things first, what we gonna do, I never liked this record. I don't like either of the beats for it. Um, the second beat is much better, but the original one with the Timberland percussion as if we are heading to Sean Paul's realm, didn't feel good. All around the world, this is actually one of my favorite Jay-Z songs. I actually enjoy this record quite a bit. It doesn't necessarily fit here. Maybe a little bit later on, somewhere on, in his discography, you can place this. I just don't feel like it fits on this album. If we wanna make this album better, we gotta remove all around the world. Poppin' Tags, Fuck All Night, The Bounce. Look, man, um, I like Poppin' Tags, but if you ain't gonna get Andre 3K on the song, they're gonna put Outkast on it, it ain't gonna work for me. Killer Mike and Big Boy did supply dope verses, but he had me laugh, he got me to giggle on the lyrics, but at the same time, it just felt like it was just a song that he just was trying to get another big pimpin' out, and it didn't work. Fuck All Night feature um, produced by Pharrell is actually really good. I, I really enjoy this record. But it's one of them songs, like I said, to make this album better, we gotta cut it. The Bounce, never really liked it. Kanye got us a dope verse on there, but whatever, we, it's getting cut. Diamond is Forever, I don't really care for the inclusion of the other Rockefeller members. Don't really care for the hook. Guns N' Roses featuring Lenny Kravitz is actually dope, Heavy D produced this. This song is actually really good. This one of the ones that gotta go. You don't know the remix, we're just cutting this because it's a remix. We tried this on Blueprint 1. Uh, let's just stay away from that. Great record though. Everybody gave dope verses on here, especially MOP. Nigga, please go ahead and just throw that on the Cradle to the Grave soundtrack. I think that's the movie this joint was in with Gabrielle Union and DMX. Just put that on the soundtrack. Don't even put that on an album. It fits better there. Too Many Hoes is a great B-side, great soundtrack song. Maybe it could have been on Super Bad. So I don't even remember what movies were out at that time, but definitely not on this album. As one, it's got this dope intro to it. It, it just doesn't work. Bitches and Sisters, you know what? I think I'm actually keep that one. I changed my mind. I'm gonna keep Bitches and Sisters. And what we're gonna do part two, like I said, I care more for this beat. Don't like the song. It's not like Jay-Z's got some wag verses on here, but like I said, it was just a reach. Let's go ahead and go over the songs that are remaining and the ones that we're adding to it. As you can see, man, the only song that we actually adding that wasn't on the album is People Talking. And uh, I actually want to make a change to this song. We'll talk about it in a second. One thing we definitely will do is we'll cut the end of the song where he's talking about Blueprint 2 on the way. It's actually going to be a full record. Got a great feature for this one. Most of the other songs, we're going to pretty much leave the way they are. We got a couple of surprises marked for a couple of these records, but for the most part, I feel like these songs, they made the greatest cohesive project. Some of these songs actually did make it onto the Blueprint 2.1. You'll see how we're gonna handle it. On to the new playlist, on to the new Blueprint 2 that's gonna make this album much better than it really was. Here we go. As you guys can see, we turned it into one album. That's what he tried to do when he tried to fix it, but that, was, that made the most sense, turning it into one cohesive album. 
We started it out pretty much the same way the original album started out with. It's a dream, a dream. Uh, we got the Biggie thing in there. We got Faith on the hook. It's dope. Got the dope intro on the way out of the song. But we actually not gonna follow that up with Hobie Baby. We're gonna follow that up with the Blueprint too. I wanna kinda do this just because this is how Takeover was on the Blueprint. You know, him, him addressing the situation. But I feel like if we wanna do it, let's do it at the beginning of the album and then just get on with the music. So a lot of people don't really like this record, but I thought his response to Nas was actually really dope, really thoughtful. He still lost the war, but it was a dope comeback. We put in the Blueprint right here, number two. Number three, we're gonna follow that up with Excuse Me Miss. Couldn't go anywhere without hearing this record at that time. The Watcher Part 2 featuring Rakim, Dr. Dre with Truth Hurts on the hook. This joint is crazy. If y'all don't know why there was a Watcher 2, if you go back to Dr. Dre's 2001, Jay-Z wrote the lyrics to the original Watcher. So the Watcher 2, it's a similar beat. Rakim killed it without cursing as usual. Dope record. Somehow, some way, it's gonna follow that up. This is dope. Love this record. This is pretty much like this can't be life part two. Um, I actually think this song is different enough that is still important to me and probably much, pretty much the whole Jay Z fan base. At number six, we're gonna keep some people hate. Now, this is one of the songs that he didn't move over, but I actually like it. I actually love how the fact that he had started all his verses off like Tupac would, and he had kind of like a lot of Tupac lines. I know this is goes along with the whole Jay-Z likes to steal lines thing, narrative that people like to push. I don't really fall victim to that. I think Jay-Z said so much dope shit that you can pretty much discount all the things that he said that other people said. Some People Hate is a dope record. Love the vibe, love the hook, love the energy, and I love that sample that. I think y'all lost your mind. That joint is just dope, so we're gonna keep that. Right after that, we're gonna go with Hovey Baby. Hovey Baby is dope, lyrical gymnastics from Jay-Z. I uh, love his whole perspective of time in that second verse. That's one of my favorite verses from Hov. So far ahead of my time, I'm about to start another life. Look behind you, I'm about to pass you twice. Back to the future, gotta slow up for the present, I'm fast. Past past. Jay-Z is a beast. Great record. Like I said, had a dope feature for people talking. We're gonna put Styles P on this joint now. For those that will squint their eyes at that. Styles P is one of the dopest lyricists out here, man. You go listen to your favorite, rap, favorite rapper's favorite rapper, and Styles P is at the top of their list. Pusha T's, the Jay-Z's, the people know. Styles P gets down, he gets conscious when he needs to, he'll slap the hell out of you when he wants to, a gangster and a gentleman. Styles P on People's Talking, third verse, I think that would have been Slaughter. That would have been one of the best songs on this project if that would have came to be. O3 Bonnie and Clyde is next. You ready, B? It's a great record. Um, I know most people prefer Tupac's Me and My Girlfriend more, me as well. It still was a dope record, man, and him being, him and Beyonce got just amazing chemistry. Obviously, they've been together for so long. Top of their games, top singer, top rapper. Made sense that they would make great music, keeping that. Meet the Parents, one of Jay-Z's best off provoking records. If y'all have not really paid attention to this record, Take the time to actually sit, close your eyes, and listen. It's a really, really deep story. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with something Jay-Z's personally seen. Just probably small experiences that he's seen him and his friends go through added up to a dope story. Great beat. Really intense, man. Love this record. Show you how. Uh, so when this came out, Cameron had took the beat and he had put a freestyle over it. Killed it. And I feel like you should add that verse to this song and just make it a regular song. And this would have technically been Jay-Z getting a feature back from Cam after New Welcome to New York City. That would have been a great, great thing for hip hop because considering that they kind of fell out for a bit after that, Cameron, I'll show you how, that would be great. And then for the last two songs, I did it my way. This actually ends the first disc and then A Battle for a Fallen Soldier ends the second disc. Um, so I think that they both fit at the end of the project. So they're going to go back to back. To back. I Did It My Way is one of my favorite Jay-Z songs with the Frank Sinatra sample in it. And A Ballad of a Fallen Soldier is just a great record to end the album. So we're going to end the album with that song. And then the same way we did on Blueprint 1, we had two bonus tracks. We're going to do the same thing. We got Bitches and Sisters, and then we got Stop. I think that rounds out the rest of the album. And I think that turns this album into a much, much better album, y'all. So what you guys think, man? Blueprint 2, Gift and a Curse. You know, my homeboy Aries, man, he was like, yo, y'all should just change the album, man. Just change the name. Don't even call it Blueprint 2, just call it The Gift and the Curse. Not a bad idea. 
but we don't change the album names here unless they're just that horrible. Let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel about that idea, how you guys feel about the organization of the new Blueprint 2 album. Let me know what you guys would have did to it. Have you heard it this way? Fantasy book it in the comments down below. I'll be in there. Thank you guys for watching, man. Thank you guys for your support. Love you guys. Peace.